All right. Seems like we should be online. Um, the time is 7.02. We promised to start at 7.03. Uh, we're almost there. Um, pretty much uh, most of you are already here, but uh, let's get going. Uh, hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Younes Lari. I am an attorney and alumni, uh, alumni of Florida Coastal uh, School of Law and admissions counselor in the Office of Admissions and your host for today's webinar. Uh, I want to thank you all for taking the time out of your busiest schedules to be with us today. These webinars have been growing in popularity and that encourages my colleagues and me to up our games and keep bringing you the material materials you want to hear and learn more about. Now, uh, today we're going to talk about the least favorite portion of your application process. The despised four-letter word of the world of admissions, the infamous LSAT. As you know, uh, the uh, abbreviation stands for Law School Admissions Test uh, to, warm, uh, to warm you up, rather, and get you all excited for the main presentation of the evening. Let me give you a little bit of history and some fun facts about the test. Of course, nothing screams excitement like using the words history and LSAT in the same sentence. Not many people know, uh, but LSAT is a baby boomer in age. Uh, but it is important to note that the idea of an admissions test uh, uh, antedates the LSAT by decades. For example, starting in 1930, Yale Law School used the test developed by the university's Department of, department of Personnel Study. I doubt they still have that department, but uh, that, that, that was the test they used. If LSAT has a birthday, it would undoubtedly be November 10, 1947. On that day, uh, a meeting of the deans of the law schools at Rutgers Northwesterns, Syracuse, Stanford, Cornell, University of Southern California, New York University, the University of Pennsylvania, Yale, and Harvard uh, was held in Princeton to discuss the proposed test. We'll talk about LSAT. And uh, the very first administration of the test was in 1948. Today, LSAT is only a year shy of being 70 years old. So, that's a little bit of history about LSAT. Uh, now to the fun part, which is the fun facts about LSAT. As fun of facts you can get uh, when, uh, when you're talking about the LSAT. Okay, fun fact number one. Fun fact number one, most people do not actually fact check their fun facts. For example, I did not fact check this one. I'm sorry. All right, back to fun facts about LSAT. Fun fact number two, or actually fun fact number one about LSAT, your brain actually alters or improves from intense LSAT study. Look into it. Uh, it would be an entire presentation, another webinar for another day, but your brain actually does improve uh, by studying for LSAT because it is a test of logic and reasoning. Um, you will get uh, much more information about the nature of the test and what to expect later on this evening. So that's something to look forward to. Actually studying for the test improves your brain. It's kind of like taking this muscle, your brain, um, for those of you who are just listening, I pointed to my head, your brain uh, to some kind of an exercise, resistance training uh, with studying for ELSA. Fun fact number three. A very small number of people actually do get a 180 uh, score every year. As you know, LSAT is a 100 to 100, 120 to 180 test, if I'm not mistaken. Like I said, you'll learn much more about it later on today. Uh, but 180 is the top score you can receive, and some people actually do it every year. In 2008, 2009, for example, out of roughly 100,000 students who took the test, uh, less than 30 received the perfect score of 180. Uh, for those of you who are trying to calculate the percentage on that, that would be 0.0003%. 0 
of those who took the test actually got the perfect point, a score of 180. Fun fact number four. In recent years, there has been a noticeable trend whereby LSAT takers are getting better at the test, presumably because of more intense prep. Now, that's another reason to get more serious about your LSAT prep, which, uh, which you already have just by attending this, uh, this webinar. Uh, seems like you're, you're seeking information and you're looking to see how you can improve that LSAT score. And finally, that the last fun fact of the night, and trust me, there are a lot of fun facts about the test. Uh, and finally, fun fact number five, among uh, the various majors in undergrad, math and physics majors actually have the best average LSAT scores. That's the best average LSAT score. If you're not a math or physics major, um, nothing to worry about. I wasn't. Uh, I, I did okay. Most people are not, actually. Most people who take the LSAT are not mathematics or physics major. But apparently, those who are uh, actually fare better in average. All right. Uh, now that we get some fun facts and some history down, and uh, now that you're all here and ready to get to the main material, let me introduce to you uh, uh, our, our headliner of the night and my dear guest speaker. I'm excited to be joined by my brilliant colleague here in the Office of Admissions, Mrs. Iana Benjamin. Iana is also an attorney and an alum of the uh, school with an ample wealth of knowledge and experience in the law school admissions world in general and about Florida Coastal School of Law uh, in particular. Additionally, additionally, uh, Iana is also in charge of all of our LSAT preparation programs. Uh, so you're in good hands. Uh, you are hearing, uh, um, you're hearing firsthand uh, from uh, the person in charge uh, of uh, our LSAT prep programs in, in our office uh, throughout this uh, webinar. I hope you guys enjoy Iana's presentation um, just as much as I enjoy working with her every day. Uh, as always, you may use the chatting box on the left side. I don't know how this works, but <laughs> I don't know how you see it, uh, but it would be on the left side on your screen uh, to type in your questions. Please use that to type in your questions and we will do our best to answer them. I encourage all of you, of course, to ask questions. Asking questions help tailoring these webinars to better fit your needs. Now, without any further ado, drum roll, I give you Miss Iana Benjamin. Iana, it is all yours. Thank you, Iana. Good evening, everybody. As Iana said, I am Iana Benjamin, and I am happy to be with you this evening. I am going to be going through a few PowerPoints. Uh, for those of you on the phone, I would read the PowerPoint to you so that you would actually be aware of what's happening. So we're going to see you the PowerPoint. Thank you so much. So like Eunice said, I um, teach the writing portion specifically of the LSAT uh, for Focus Approach. Focus Approach is, the, you, is the, the LSAT provider that we use to prepare students for the LSAT. And it's all done online. So I could give you more information on that at the end of our program to help prepare you for the LSAT. Um, but yes, I'll give you more information at the end. I am also a graduate of the City University of New York. And like you said, I am a Florida Coastal alum. So the three main things that we'll discuss today are how the LSAT is used in law school admissions, what's on the exam, and how you should prepare. So the LSAT, you guys all know about the LSAT, but I'll go into a little bit more detail. The LSAT is required by students applying to almost all ABA approved law schools. Most of you probably would have heard uh, recently that Harvard is also accepting the GRE. And I suspect that moving forward, a lot more schools will look into using the GREs also. But unfortunately for those of you who are uh, now, now applying for, for uh, 2017, you still, and applying to Florida Coastal, you still have to use the LSAT. So it's important because LSAT uh, give, give the admissions staff a good idea of how you test. Um, it's 
Put, to put it another way, LSAT is more important in law school admissions than the SATs are in college admissions. Um, we don't only look at the LSAT, of course. We look at your undergraduate GPA, your personal statements, your letters of recommendation, your resume. Um, but it's important that you prepare adequately for this test so that you can get better scholarship packages. So the LSAT serves important functions to admissions committees because it's kind of like a standardized test across the board for all undergraduate institutions. So we can get an idea of how you test. Um, and it, it tests some of the skills that you would use in your first year of law school. And it, it kind of weeds out unserious applicants also. But it really doesn't test your ability as an attorney. It really does test how you do in school. So the focus is on you preparing to do as well as possible so that it can give us a good indicator of how you'll do in the first year of law school. So how does that score? Eunice mentioned it. Uh, there are a number of questions, usually between 99 to 101, and it scales from 120 to 180. 120 is if you went in and just basically wrote your name down. So that's not your goal. Your goal is to get the closer to the 180 mark as possible. Then there is a percentile rank that uh, LSAC puts you in for us. And generally, there isn't like a passing score. So the higher you score, like I said, the better your chances of admission. And most importantly, the better your chances of financial aid. So all told, the LSAC takes roughly five to six hours, including registration and administration. So when, that, when I factored in those numbers, it, it accounts for you signing up for an LSAC account, you um, going in and taking the test. Um, so those five to six hours are about registration and administration. What's on the exam? So it's four 35-minute board sections. So there are two logical reasoning sections. An, analogic, an analytical reasoning section, which is the logical game, uh, and a reading comprehension section. Then there's two 35-minute unscored sections. So these are experimental and not identified or identifiable. And then there's that writing sample that I mentioned. So the reading comprehension, is, it's like the SATs, but it's just a bit harder. So there are four passages covering hard and soft sciences and the arts, and there are 26 to 20 questions in total. And the challenge is that the answer choices are evenly designed for you to get them wrong. And though Eunice said that you know, students are scoring better um, on, on the LSAT on the whole, these questions have gotten significantly harder than they were five years ago. So it's important that you start studying and understanding them earlier in the process. The logical reasoning. So this is half of your score. So two of the sections are scored. And like I said, 24 to 26 questions. And they get progressively more difficult. Um, a variety of challenges occur, such as strengthen the argument, weaken the argument, resolve a paradox or find the logical flaw um, in, a, in a particular question. So it requires an understanding not just of everyday and formal logic, informal logic, but basic formal and symbolic logic as well. So if you took any philosophy classes in college, those were, will help you through this section. This is an example of, of one of those questions. So it says, John never does the dishes. He always ignores them or waits for someone else to do them. This may represent self-involvement or mere laziness. But in either case, I don't think John will make a good husband for Susan. So then the question asks, which of the following is an assumption on which the argument depends? So like right away, you're like, what? You were just talking about John doing dishes. How does that relate to John being a good husband? So it's important that you expose yourself to these types of questions early in the process so that you're not um, freaking out if, you, if you're trying to do this cold turkey. 
logical game. So this is an example for those of you on the phone. I've put like a logical game uh, example up on the screen and it's a simple question about like a dinosaur. And how does a simple question about dinosaur toys turn into logical confusing games? So I just wanted to give you guys an example of what it would look like um, on the slide. The writing sample. So this section is not formally scored and it's considered the least important section on the exam, but a word of caution. So as an admissions counselor, we do read the writing samples, especially when we're trying to get an idea of how well you write. So it's important that you don't shove it off. Even though it's not scored by LSAC, all the schools get a copy of the writing sample. So they do read it. So they give you one writing prompt with two clear choices. So this is probably the only time in your life throughout your law school career where you're like, okay, there's a side to pick and, and you're going to go hardcore on one side. So you're going to write it almost like a high school essay. You're going to be very clear about your decision between the two options. Make sure you fill out all the space. Use your own word, spell check. And of course, you should write at least one practice essay before you, um, before you actually go on the test and actually do it. So LSAT does um, offer free practice LSAT. So you should definitely take advantage of that because it's free, of course. Um, and I provided a link here. And I know Eunice probably could type it into uh, the box so that you guys could have it for your records. Um, but yes, but or just log on to LSAC and there, there are samples there for you to review. So what skills do you need to build in order to do well on the LSAT? Logic or understanding logic and reading logic is, is probably your, your, the skill that you need, need to build most upon. So of course, reading and time management is really key, but if you understand logic, that will definitely help you when the pressure cooker of the exam comes around. So what materials should you use um, to prepare for the LSAT? So there are a lot of prep books out there, but I really honestly believe that the, re the only material you truly need are practice questions from LSAT. And you can find these on Amazon generally, um, the, the LSAT books where it has real LSAT questions, where it explains to you well, actually, it's just a question, so there's no explanation in terms of how to, to, to approach the question. But I really believe spending the time to do as many practice questions as possible helps you in the process of actually doing well on the test. Because the more exposure to the test and the type of questioning, you're going to be more comfortable on test day. So, I mean, I am open to definitely you taking any prep course that feels comfortable for you um, because ultimately it's your study habits that will make every bit of sense to help you do well on the test. So any reputable prep company will definitely give you the test, but you should definitely have real LSAT questions. How many tests should you take? So really and truly taking full tests under timed conditions, under test conditions is the best way for you to effectively prepare for the LSAT. So I would say at least 40 solid tests before the test, before the real test. So I know LSAT has released at least 68 previous full test for you. So if you can do way more than half of those, you're well on your way to getting a good score on the LSAT. So full time test under time conditions, make sure, you know, the room that you're in is relatively cold. Make sure that if there are distractions on, that they stay on just in case on test day there are distractions and you, you knock them out under time conditions. So an ideal 
prep calendar for most students. I tell students three to four months to prepare for the exam is absolutely ideal. So five months, five or more months is too long because you're gonna run out of material. Because like I told you, only 68 tests exist. So if you're you know, taking longer, like taking up an entire year to prepare, you're not gonna really have enough tests to prepare. So you wanna definitely give yourself three to four months. A month is not enough time for a top score. So as of today, there's still ample time to prepare for the June LSAT if you intend to apply for the fall 2017 semester. So for Florida Coastal, we accept the June test. Some schools don't, but we do accept the June test for the start of the fall semester. So you do have enough time to buckle down, get some test prep books, and start preparing. So a basic three-month study plan. So if you're working with a tutor or taking a prep course or uh, working with a professional, um, they would recommend this, this study plan for you. But if you're studying on your own, consider this timeline, right? So in month one, you're gonna take a diagnostic exam. So you're gonna purchase the test booklet, then you're gonna take a, prep, uh, a diagnostic exam just to see how you do, right? Then if you, depending on how you do, you should go out and buy a prep book to tell you how to prepare for, for the particular question, right? And then you're gonna work through at least 20 half exams. And then work through them methodically. Work through them by answering them, answering the questions that you know, okay, I'm gonna probably get this right first to give yourself some encouragement and boost. And the questions that you think, or the sections that you think you're gonna have weaknesses with, spend more time on those sections, right? Then in month two, you're gonna review methodically whatever the, the prep books tell you to, and then take time tests repeatedly. And then review those time tests, because the other thing about taking time tests, you wanna make sure that you're reviewing what you got wrong so that you could understand what you got wrong so that you won't repeat the same mistake. So make sure you review those prep tests thoroughly. And then by month three, every week, you're taking a time test under time conditions and going through that review process to make sure you're prepping thoroughly for, for the LSAT. So here are my 10 tips, all right? You're gonna set an attainable goal and set a study plan. You're gonna take the exam early, meaning, well, that one doesn't really apply to you now, but um, save for future references for some of you who are taking it down the road, you definitely wanna take it as early as possible so that you have an opportunity to take it again if the score was not to your liking. Then consider prep options carefully, meaning you wanna make sure that if you're doing it on your own, that you are following a three-month plan by methodically going through um, test prep material, or if you're taking a class that you're following along the class, or if you're working with a tutor, that a tutor understands your weaknesses and your strengths. Um, understanding logical games diagramming. That is the biggest key. And as a matter of fact, for the logical games portion, that's the easiest score to improve upon. So if you practice those enough, you are gonna improve on that section the quickest. So make sure that you spend time practicing that section as much as you can. Master and understand basic formal logic. And then understand the basic structure and mechanisms of an argument. Because for the reading comprehension section, it's required that you understand, and that's what they're basically testing, that you understand the mechanisms of, and structure of argument. Predict the answers. My instructor, I took a class when I was preparing for the LSAT, my instructor used to drill that in us all the time. Make sure you can predict the answers. Predicting the answers helps you choose the right answer ultimately. Get comfortable with the process of elimination. So make sure that you can definitely cross out which answers are absolutely wrong. Practice smart. And by that, I mean you want to make sure you take time tests 
under time conditions, under test conditions. And of course, prepare for test day. And then some people don't recognize that if they feel like they're not adequately prepared for the test, but they still want to go through or the time, the deadline has passed to, um, to not go to the test and you still have to go, make sure you recognize that if you feel like you didn't do well, like you have an absolute feeling like, oh my God, I didn't do well, you can cancel that score. It's, it's tough sometimes, especially if you spend $180 and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to waste this money. But if you know in your hearts of hearts that you didn't do well, you know you can cancel your score. And then these are the resources. So LSAT.org has a wealth of information on uh, the LSAT, the official guide uh, .lsat.org is also a great guide to give you those practice tests that I mentioned. And of course, Amazon also has uh, the tests that I mentioned also. So I wanna take some time to talk about, oh, I have a question coming in, so I'm gonna pause a bit. How many times can you cancel your score? Not that I'm going to do that as a question. You can cancel your score as many times. So I think within one year, you can take the test three times, right? After that, you have to wait for two years before you can take the test again. So of course, you don't want to just sign up and take the test and cancel. But you can cancel the score three times within that given year. So, but that's not something, of course, you want to do. You want to make sure you're adequately prepared uh, before you go into the test. Canceling the test is just your extreme measure. If like, for example, you're like, oh my goodness, my stomach was hurting me so badly while I was doing this test, I definitely can't report this score. So go ahead and cancel it in a circumstance like that. Um, but if you know that you put in the time and you um, practice methodically, you want to go ahead and see what that score does to you. Because the good thing at Florida Coastal is that we take the highest score. We don't average out the scores like some schools do. We take the highest score. So if you take it the first time and you're like, oh my goodness, I definitely feel like I could do better because my preparation could have been better, you want to go ahead and take it again, and more than likely your score would improve. But the, the goal with the LSAT is preparation is so if you really do put in the time, the three months, three to four months of preparation, methodic preparation, you will do well on the LSAT. I was going to tell you about our channel program. I have a couple more questions coming in, so I'm going to address those first. How do you go about de developing a self-study plan? So I will go back to my previous slides to show you. I don't know if that person who asked me that question is on the phone or on um, email, but you basically write down a timeline. So now we're in March. So April, let's say April is your start of your study. So your first goal is to acquire as much past test as possible, right? You get those, those test books ready. Once you have those textbooks ready, you're going to take one exam and you're going to dive. You're going to take that test on a time condition and you're going to score yourself. Once you get a score, you know you have something to work from because you can either improve on that score or maintain that score, right? After that, you can go get a, a prep booklet if you're self studying and go through the prep booklet or the prep book. And it will give you step by step to how to prepare uh, for the particular questions you got wrong or how to approach those questions that you you didn't feel so sure about. And then um, by month two, so after April, by May, you should be taking time tests under time conditions, under test conditions, as much as you can. And then and then by June, by June, June is test day. The test is June 12th. So by I would say by May 12th, every week, you need to be taking time tests and you should see your score improving. One of the key things you have to do is make sure you go back to those questions that you got wrong to understand why you got them wrong so that you can approach them appropriately, right? There was another question about, do colleges look at all your scores or only your best? So yes, 
some schools look at all, all your scores. So some schools are like, you should only take the test once. That's why canceling the score is crucial in times like that when you're like, oh my goodness, I definitely don't think, and it's not just a gut feeling that you didn't do well. You know that during the test you were completely unfocused, you were completely off your game. You definitely need to consider canceling the test. So yeah, so some some schools do look at only um, your best score like we do. We look at your highest score no matter what. It doesn't matter. We look at your highest score. But some schools only take an average of all the three scores that you have. There's another question coming in. I plan on taking the test in December. Previously, took the LSAT in 2010 and 2011. So a three to four month plan will suffice? Yes. So, yes, so for you, 2010, you are definitely outside of the, the five-year mark. So every, your score expires every five years. So you would need to, to retake the test. And yes, a three to four month plan would work perfectly for you because you can start, well, starting now is probably gonna be counterproductive for you because you will run out of tests. So I would say start by August or September and you start on your one month plan, you do a diagnostic exam, well, you've been through the LSAT, so you know how it is, it's done, and you know the process, so you don't have to really do a diagnostic at that point in time. I, anyway, you can just jump right in to start taking time tests under time conditions and making sure the questions you got incorrectly, that you understand why you got them wrong so you won't make the error again. I hope that answers that question. So I was going to mention to you guys um, about our channel program. We have a program where it's completely online. Everything is online. The writing portion of, of the test is online, and the multiple choice portion is online. You can visit www.focusapproach.com, and you can register for the test there. Register for the class there. Our, um, the way it's designed is to ensure that students who get a certain score on the LSAT would get guaranteed admission to our school once there are no character and fitness issues. So it's designed to really assist you. It's $9.95 and that money is reimbursed to you in the form of a scholarship uh, once you get the required score on the LSAT, once there are no, like I said, character and fitness issues. So it's something that we were really proud of. We've had a lot of success with it. Our students love it because it's exclusively online if that's the way you learn. Um, and, and students really, really do enjoy it. One thing I also want to mention is our, we have an LSAT boot camp coming up where the instructor from the Focus Approach is going to come on campus and he's going to teach you the tips and tools. He's going to go way more in depth to questions um, than I did tonight. Um, it's going to be on campus. We're going to provide you guys a dinner, and it's going to be LSAT and dinner, and our instructor, he's great. He's wonderful. You guys will really like him. So if you can, I encourage you to come on campus on April 18th and April 19th. It's going to be in the evening, 545 to 9 p.m. on the first night, April 18th, and on April 19th, 6 p.m. to 9 o'clock. Um, and it's going to be great. So you can register for that. I would register for that. Eunice, can you also put the link for the LSAT prep um, in the message? I know it's LSATBootCamp.com, but I think there's a FDSL in there also, if you can type that in for, for the students. But if you can't um, find the link, Eunice, that's okay also. Uh, you can call me directly. My number is 904. 680-7683, and I will get your email addresses and go ahead and send you the link so you can register for that. So that's definitely all I have. Unless you guys have more questions for me, I will definitely be happy to answer any further questions you may have. just typed into the um, link, the channel program uh, boot camp, where you can definitely get 
signed up and definitely come and get some in-depth tips on, on the specific questions because he'll be going through questions upon questions upon questions with you guys and telling you how to approach each question. So there's a question here about the LSAT prep course other than the one in April. So no, so that one's targeted to students who are gonna take the June LSAT. So there's not gonna be another one um, probably not until late in the fall or probably early next year, unfortunately. That April 18th and April 19th are the only ones. All right. Well, thank you very much, Yana. Uh, I, th I think that is it, unless there are other questions. Um, as I go through the a wrap of, the, of this, uh, this webinar, uh, feel free uh, to type in your questions still, uh, as I still have Yana here. Uh, but uh, I just want to thank you all again, uh, like you did at the top of the webinar. I think today we had the record in terms of the attendance. So thank you very much. It's very encouraging. Uh, it was great to, to have sat with you guys today in this virtual classroom. Uh, you're very welcome, Karina. And, uh, Everybody else, all the all the great questions. Uh, uh, I, I want to thank all the uh, all of our uh, attendees who asked questions. Karina, uh, of course, uh, Stanford. Uh, the names that I have here, Philip, uh, and uh, I, I hope I mention everyone. Reagan, uh, and and uh, that's about it. Lauren and everybody else who uh, who participated. Uh, whether uh, you were on your phone or, or, or on your computer, uh, please keep an eye out for uh, upcoming webinars. We have these um, every other Wednesday usually. Uh, based on the attendance we got today, it seems like uh, in the evening or afternoon, 7, 7 p.m.-ish uh, works usually better for, uh, for, for, for you guys instead of uh, the, uh, the noon uh, window, which uh, we used to do normally. So we try to keep it as... as uh, as convenient as possible for you guys. But once again, uh, thanks everyone. Thanks, Iana. And we look forward to have you guys again for the next webinar. Best of luck to, your, uh, to you guys with the LSAT. And of course, uh, as always, don't hesitate to reach out to us at the Office of Admissions in uh, Florida Coastal School of Law. And we are, uh, we're always more than happy to help you, uh, to help answer any questions or concern you might have. Have a great rest of the evening, and uh, we look forward to see you again on uh, the next webinar. All right. Bye. Thank you. Good night.